All right, guys, let's talk about deployments and testing end to end tests in different deployments, whether as local PR or production, dev, doesn't matter. Um, I think I talked about configurations, optimizing configurations with Cypress before, but uh, I will have a working example. So in this Next.js app, I try it myself. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's super convenient. Basically, all you have to figure out is, can I give access from yourself to my GitHub repo and it is just enter the name. And then all you have to do after that is to be able to build your app locally. If it builds locally, it will 99% build on yourself. And then it integrates pretty neatly with um, your repo. Not only it gives you a preview, like during your PR, you get a preview, here's your temporary branch, and then you can go to it and play with it. But also after the deployment, it just push it, pushes all that to your production URL, which I really like. I mean, that, that's very good. Cool. Anyway, so given that, you can test things locally and then Vercel is deploying easily to a production environment. What can you do? For testing, so you can configure Cypress and then you can test against all these different environments. So let's take a look at the changes. Now I'll, I'll go through the PR and I'll just show you the files. But the main change is I had one YAML file that was running in PRs that the same thing was running in after deployment. So right now there is a specific one for PRs and then there's going to be a specific one for deployments. So all this one is doing differently is taking a custom config file or local configuration of Cypress. The dev version it is only different in the sense that it's just taking a different config file and that's dev.config. On that, it's not doing linting, type check, and component testing because those are irrelevant when you're testing a deployment. All you want is an end to end test. See, I'll show you the how we convert the Cypress config file into the base.config. And that's going to be an easy, easy one. And then we have a separate file for dev.config and a local.config. And the only distinction between them is that base URL. Everything else is in this file called base.config, which is very close to what Cypress config in the root was. Well, let's just take a look at those. I think that's where it gets interesting. So we used to have a Cypress config file and the uh, root. So we just create a similar thing. And if you're looking at the PR, right? The only thing that's doing it, it was doing a default export to define config. So instead of that, we're doing a, hey, just a custom import. So at the end, this is just an object, right? And then we just give that type. So we have some type safety with the configuration. And then all we do is import that. We import that and merge it. I showed this in a previous video, but I didn't have a code sample. So here we go with the code sample that we can reuse. So that's the configuration in different deployments. Of course, we modify our package of JSON scripts a little bit. So all the local things, We'll get the local file, local config file change. All the dev deployment things, we'll get the dev deployment file change. So this way, locally, you can target things against the local host or CI. So if you do open local, that's going to hit the local server that's running here. And if you do Local dev that's going to hit the remote server. I'll just get this ready. Open dev. I'll just change the browser here, maybe, real quick. So, with end to end tests, if you're picking different browsers, you can run multiple instances of sizes. It doesn't work with end to end. And Component test as far as I know. 
haven't been able to do that, but uh, they, could, they could try that. So now you'll be seeing things running against localhost. And let's just launch them against dev on the side of the call this part. And then that hits a real URL where the application gets supported. So that, that's all it takes. So your local configurations, right? You move them, make a nice common config, and then you set your uh, local and deployment configurations. And there's going to be minimal changes between them. And for the YAMLs, you're going to specify your config file. And that needs to take a path starting from the root, so just be careful with that. For dev, it's going to be a similar thing. And the only difference there will be if we're taking that. They have, they have different configuration. But besides that, um, you're not starting anything with npm run dev or waiting on it. So since it's already deployed, because this thing happens post deployed. Um, other than that, uh, I think the only key point here is that I am using a .m file. And if you're using a .m file and you're in a subdirectory, just make sure to first configure the path. So usually when you're at root, it's going to look like this. But when you're in a subdirectory, you can configure where your environment file um, is supposed to be and where you're grabbing it from. So that's one trick. Part of that, you do your config files, you do your YAML files, you do your package with JSON scripts, and then you all set, of course, the deployment part. For self script, that super easy to try it out. That's it. That's all I want to share. So I'll uh, give a link to the PR and you can take a look later.